Hello and welcome to this maths training video. In this video we're going to continue studying fractions. Uh, in previous videos we've looked at improper and mixed fractions, we've looked at what a fraction is and how we can use it. What we're going to do now is start delving into the world of doing arithmetic with fractions, so adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing. What we're going to look at first is the subject of multiplying fractions. Now we're going to start here, this isn't a traditional place to start with uh, arithmetic and fractions, but we're starting here because it's actually the easiest way uh, of kind of carrying out arithmetic with fractions. Uh, so it starts off really nice and simple when we're multiplying and gets a little bit trickier as we go, but fear not because I'll guide you through step by step. So let's have a look at some of the principles involved in multiplying fractions together. Okay, so let's say we've got a question like this. What is one third of one quarter? Now I know what you're thinking, Joe, we just said that we were going to multiply fractions and we're not doing that. Well, just bear with me and all will become clear. So let's start off with this question. What is one third of one quarter? Okay, so if we bring up uh, our first little symbol here, remember we always think in terms of pizza whenever we're doing any, anything at all to do with fractions, it's always about pizza. Uh, and you can see here we've got a pizza that has been split into thirds. So there's our third, and then over here we've got our quarter. So there you can see the second pizza has been split into quarters, and we've got one of those quarters shaded. So what we're saying in this question is what is one third of one quarter? So the simplest way of doing this is simply to take that quarter and then divide it into thirds. So let's do that. So you can see if we take that shaded area and split it into three equal parts, you can see there that we've got uh, our quarter in thirds. So what we're interested in is what is one third of this overall quarter? Well, it's a slice of pizza that size, as you can see there. So looking a bit like a Trivial Pursuit piece there. So there's our one third. So what that looks like as an answer, if we do it pictorially, is this. You can see there we've now got this purple shaded section which represents one third of one quarter. But what I've done is continued splitting up that pizza into equal segments. So if we count these up now, you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve equal segments. So this has been split into twelfths. So what you can see now is that one third of one quarter is one twelfth. And actually, uh, we're going back to what we said at the start now, where surely we're multiplying. Well, actually, if we do this, you can see here that actually saying what is one third of one quarter is exactly the same as saying what is one third times one quarter. We end up with one twelfth. So laid out mathematically, that would look like this. One third times one quarter is equal to one twelfth. So nice and simple so far. Uh, so let's have a, another kind of go at this pictorially to illustrate what we're doing here. It's always good to think in real terms. So let's think in terms of pizza again. So now we've got what is two thirds of three quarters. So slightly different now. And you can see here we've got our pizza cut into thirds again. And this time we've shaded two of those thirds. And we're saying what is two thirds of three quarters. So there's our pizza split into quarters and we've shaded three of those, that nice orange colour. So we're interested in two thirds of three quarters. So remember when we do this now, we're only interested in this shaded section. It's like we can ignore this part now for the sake of our uh, calculation here. So what is two thirds of three quarters? Well, you can see that this shaded area that's orange has actually already been split into three equal parts for us. One, two, three, you can see that there. So two thirds of that would be this orange section and this orange section. So when we draw that out as an answer, it will look something like this. You can see there we've got that purple section represents that orange section added to that orange section. So we've got our pizza split into quarters. We're interested in three of those quarters and we're saying what is two thirds of those three quarters. Well, the answer is nice and neatly one half, as you can see there. So again, representing that as a multiplication, two thirds times three quarters gives us one half. And again, we can lay that out mathematically speaking, two thirds times three quarters. And that's gonna look something like that, equals one half. Okay, now, during an exam or in real life, obviously you don't wanna spend your entire time drawing out slices of pizza and shading them different colors. Uh, to visualize this, this is kind of just an aid to help us to understand what we're actually doing here. So when you start to look at this in a little bit more detail, if we go back to our previous question, and you can see here we've got one third times one quarter. If you look at this calculation, you'll notice a pattern here. You see we've got uh, at the bottom three times four gives us 12. 
and along the top, 1 times 1 gives us 1. And actually, that is all you've got to do when you're multiplying fractions. You multiply the top two numbers together and put it over here at the top, and then you multiply the bottom two numbers together and put it over here at the bottom. And whatever comes out of that is your fraction. So here, a third times a quarter is equal to a twelfth, because 1 times 1 equals 1 at the top, 3 times 4 equals 12 at the top. Let's see if I'm lying to you or if this logic kind of persists as we continue down this road. So going back to our second example, two-thirds of three-quarters, does this work out now? So we said that two-thirds times three-quarters is one-half. So let's do the maths. Two times three will give us a six over here at the top, and three times four multiplied together gives us 12 here. So you can see that's going to look like that. So we've got... 2 times 3 equals 6, 3 times 4 equals 12, and we've got 6 twelfths. However, we did say that our answer was uh, 1 half, and here we've got 6 twelfths. So was I lying, or am I still right? Well, again, if you remember going back to some of our previous videos when we looked at uh, simplifying fractions, you can see here that actually, if we split our pizza into 12 equal parts, how many of those uh, twelfths have we got shaded? 1, 2, 3. 4, 5, 6, so we've got 6 twelfths. So that leads us nice and to the conclusion that 6 twelfths is equal to 1 half. So it does still work, the multiplication is accurate, we just need to remember to simplify that fraction by cancelling it down into its simplest form, as you can see here. Nice and simple. Okay, so let's have a look at one more example for this video. What is 3 fifths of 1 half? Now we're going to just basically sack off the pizzas at this stage because obviously we're not going to be able to put down pizza as an answer in an exam. We need to come up with the actual answer. So let's do some calculating here and figure out what we're going to come out with. So uh, we'll revert to pen mode now. So we've got 3 fifths times 1 half. Remember that's the same as 3 fifths times 1 half is the same as 3 fifths of 1 half. So multiply the top two numbers together. 3 times 1 gives us 3 at the top. And then 5 times 2 gives us 10 at the bottom. Now that can't be simplified any further, so we're saying that 3 fifths of 1 half is 3 tenths. And there is your solution, nice and simple. So there we go, that's a brief introduction to multiplying fractions. Uh, it really couldn't be easier, it's just simple multiplication and really nice and simple. It, that is going to help us out though when we move on to dividing fractions, which is the next stage, because when we divide fractions it's similar but with one kind of essential change that we need to make. Now, as always, if you're feeling really confident with this subject, if you're really comfortable that you'll be able to do this and repeat this in an exam and in the real world, then please feel free to skip the following video, because in the following video we'll just do a whole bunch of examples to uh, kind of reinforce this into your mind nice and firmly, so that you know exactly what you're doing when you get into that exam room or when you need to do this in the real world. Uh, but if you're really comfortable with this, you think you'll be able to nail it, then please feel free to skip the next video in the series and move on to dividing fractions. So hopefully this video has been useful to you. Uh, you may have learned something new or it may have been a refresher, uh, but either way, please leave us some comments below. Uh, please subscribe and please like this video as it all helps out with the algorithm and helps to keep food on the kitchen table. And as always, thank you very much for watching.